today I'm going to be talking through my budget for March. So I will talk you through my income, my expenses, and you can budget along with me. So welcome to the Looking After Your Pennies YouTube channel. I'm Charlotte Jessup and every month for the last four months I have been doing a budget with me video. So if you like this video feel free to go back and look over the past three months so you can see how things have evolved to get to this point. Now I started doing these videos as a form of accountability and to kind of show people how to use a budget spreadsheet and the kind of thought processes that I go through each month, the things that I tweak and change and the things that I think about when I've got more money or less money and how I adapt as the month goes on. So if you like this video, you can get your hands on my free budget spreadsheet. If you have a look in the description below, you will see a link where you can get the exact spreadsheet that I use in this video to use for yourself. So make sure you bookmark that for later so you can go and sign up for that and it will get delivered straight to your inbox. So a few things before I kick off and show you exactly what I'm doing this month. So coming up in March, we have, this is a good income month. So if you've watched the previous videos, you will know that my our, our income changes. So it depends on whether uh, my husband is working, he was kind of temping over Christmas. Now, because my business is going really well, he is employed by me. So I'll talk you through that in a bit in a minute. And it's been a pretty good month. It's not been as good as I thought, mostly because some invoices haven't paid up as quickly as I'd have liked. But it is a good income month and things are on the up. The other thing is it's that it's my eldest daughter's birthday. We're still in lockdown, so it's not gonna be a huge party or anything like that, but we're gonna budget a few little treats in too. We've also got some excess cash, so you will get to see how I allocate that and what I put that towards in our budget. So let's jump into that and take a look. Okay, so here we have the familiar site of my budget and I've done a lot of the work already on this to put in some of the figures so that we can just talk through these quickly. So let's start off with the income. So we always start off with the income. So I said that this month had been a really good month and it's the first month that um, my husband has been self-employed and involved in the business too. However, he has been doing a lot of the editing for these YouTube videos. So you've got him to thank for that. So this month he's getting a little bit of a pay increase. Um, lots of reasons for doing that. I actually got paid more than this, but we had quite a lot of expenses that I pay for, things like laptops, uh, website hosting, uh, a new microphone for my podcast. So this is what was left when I took all those things out. So it's been a really good month for the business, hence why my husband is now working for me properly rather than just volunteering his time. And this is... Yeah, so this is the total that we've got from that. So £3,259.71. We've also got our usual there, which is the child benefit of £140. We get that every month. So that all goes in there. So that gives us about £3,400. So if you've watched some of these videos previously, we've kind of been on a bit of a journey with the income, but it's on the way up uh, and things are looking good. So now, if we have a look at the expenditures, we've got some of the regular ones here. So these, whenever I create a new template for this, lots of these get copied over, and then I go through and I delete some of them. So you can see here that we have got a, uh, a mortgage payment here that's £392. We're not even paying that for this particular month. So that is, that's just our basic minimum mortgage payment. We've also got our council tax, which I think is gonna go up in April, so this, that will probably change on the next version of this budget. House maintenance, nothing in that part of the minute. I have put some money in savings, so I might move uh, some of that in a minute on this budget over so that we have something in the pox. We do want to start looking at doing some work in our garden and um, redoing our bathroom too. So, Electricity, gas, water, phone, mobile phone, none of that has changed. I checked that. If you saw the last video, you will have heard me say that I checked these figures then and they are as low as they can be. I think that these will be next up for review, particularly the phone and the internet. Uh, it's up for review in May. Uh, so it won't be till then till we see any significant change in this category, I don't think. Food and drink, so I try to cut down on our food and drink. So typically I work on about 
80 pounds per week. But obviously we've been in lockdown, so we've had a bit more, a few more treats, shall we say. So that figure has, um, that's fa that stayed fairly consistent throughout the, oh, throughout the time that I've been doing this budget, which has been years and years and years now. So I really don't think there's probably a lot to cut back there. I think we've done pretty well. Um, I know there will be lots of people that maybe watch this that think, oh, I could do it for less, but actually we eat good quality of food. Um, I have celiac disease and lactose intolerance and uh, IBS. So I have a lot of like food related stuff that I have to manage. So this works out well for me. So takeaways, I'm actually budgeting in extra for takeaways this month. Uh, it is my eldest daughter's sixth birthday in March. So I know that she's going to want some sort of treat, whether it's going to be like a McDonald's or I mean, my kids are really into like Thai and Indian food. So she might suggest something like that. So I want extra of those. We usually have at least one. Uh, so I'm budgeting for, you know, two or maybe even three, depending on the sort that we get. Uh, so that is in there. Um, I've put some money in the next category, which is transport. I put some money in for fuel. I still think we've got like half a tank left and we're still hardly going anywhere. But I'm also aware that schools are going to be reopening in March and that my youngest is back at nursery. So we're doing a few more of those trips. So we might see our need for fuel increase. So I put £50 in there. We should fill it back up again, which would be perfect. So last month we paid for our car insurance, uh, our car tax and our MOT. So I am restarting these pots again. I'm never too worried about car maintenance. I've just paid out for some new tires as well. That was last month as well. Um, so I'm just gonna give myself a month off on the car maintenance pot and then we'll be back on that next month. Right then, I'm gonna leave the savings for now. I go to entertainment. We're still paying for Netflix. Uh, so that's that. We don't have a TV license because we don't watch BBC. Uh, so we don't worry about that. Um, I'm also going to put some more money. So days are still aren't going to be a thing because I don't think we're going to be allowed out anywhere until the 29th of March anyway. And if we suddenly decide to go somewhere on the 30th of March, that will be probably cheap because I don't think anywhere is open. So I'm not too worried about having a days out front. I do want a holiday. So I'm optimistic after the lockdown uh, roadmap announcements that came out, I think that we might actually get away. We've already got some money set aside for holidays. So I'm just going to add a bit to that because I'm feeling more optimistic. So insurances, we've got life insurance. I always pay our house insurance in full. I think that's about £10 per month. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in there. I don't know whether they didn't carry over from the last one. So don't know whether we just didn't put money aside that month or not. I assume I did. We also have some other insurance which covers things like uh, mobile phone insurance, travel insurance, and um, roadside assistance. We get that with our bank. I think the £12 that we pay for that is actually very reasonable. Basically, based on the amount of phones that I've dropped, that has paid for itself many times over. So this month I'm also putting in a personal allowance. This is kind of like our fun money for my husband and I. We don't buy a lot, but sometimes it's just nice to have that buffer. We've kind of gone without for the last couple of months. In January, we were spending Christmas money. And in February, we kind of just went without. It was a short month and we coped. But I think we're ready to have some of that fun money back. It could be that we just put that towards savings. We've both got things that we want to buy. So that money could just go towards that. So this last box before I go back to like our savings and things like that is giving. So like I said, my eldest has a birthday in March. So I've allocated 50 pounds as her birthday budget. That's kind of standard birthday budget in this house. Um, so I'm happy to put the money towards that. Typically, I have like a sinking fund set up for this, but I've not been doing this recently. I don't really know why. I think it's because there's normally like one birthday a month. So I just factor that in. Um, but yeah, so it's her birthday. Uh, so we're going to put that in there too. We've also got Christmas, a sinking fund for Christmas that's not coming up in March, fear not. Um, so I've got a, a sinking fund available for Christmas. Uh, so £50 towards that, they will give me £600 when we get to Christmas. Um, and that covers everything from gifts to food shopping. So that works out well for us. Now, I've been trying to get more proactive about giving away money. So we have been giving away to various causes. And so I have allocated a full 300 pounds. Most of that 
we'll just go straight out the door on kind of day one. Um, but yeah, we've got a budget there for 300 pounds just for general giving. So we will decide exactly what we want to do with that. And it makes me quite happy um, to see that we are hitting like a 12% giving figure there. Even though some of it's gonna be like Christmas and birthdays, it's, it's a good figure. Let's look at these savings then. So we've got like a huge chunk going to savings here. Now I regularly invest, if you've watched this video, you will see that, me, that I'm investing regularly. I'm making pensions contributions and I have other investments too. So um, this past time is just savings. This is going to our savings. So this will go uh, towards kind of like anything. It's kind of a general savings um, pot. We've obviously got sinking funds for different things. Um, I might move some out of that and allocate it specifically to house maintenance um but normally i kind of just keep a general pot um and then we kind of just dip into it for stuff that we want this is probably going to go towards a holiday or some sort of adventures over the summer at the moment so i'm happy really to keep that there so investments um we kind of typical investment amount has been like around like 500 that's kind of what i like to invest but we've got a bit extra to play with this month so i'm going to put 700 in that pensions i'm up in that too not completely because actually i wouldn't retire early so that's why i'm focusing more on putting money into my stocks and shares i because i can access that at any time but i still think it's worth investing in a pension for us because we get the tax relief and it gives us an extra little buffer for when we're old and we don't want to work whereas the stocks and shares ISA will be for when we're still fit to work but we just don't want to uh, we've got the ju kids junior ISIS there. Typically, that's been £25 per month. So we're up in that. They'll get £100 each this month. And then other investments. So I've got a few other just random things that I invest in, things that we play with. Uh, so that goes in there. So it's a good, like, 43% savings, which is fabulous. We've got a leftover £9 and 4p there, which I'm going to just shove in the um, house maintenance sinking fund. And you know what, I might actually reduce some of this personal figure and move that over here as well and make that £109 and 4p so that we're actually working towards that goal of getting our bathroom done. So that's it for the budget, nothing major, nothing particularly exciting this month, um, but yeah, there we have it, a bit more money to play with and this is what we've done with it. So there we go, there is my budget for March. We will have to see how it pans out and which invoices are gonna show up next month to see how April is going to go. Obviously March is one of the longest months, so there's got a lot more to budget for this month and it'll be interesting to see how it pans out. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to see my future budget videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button. You can also check out the rest of my content. I like talking about frugal living, investing, making money, saving money, and the environment too. So make sure you go check out the rest of my catalog of videos and I will see you in the next video.